we're back. Another video series here on the uh, CCM markers and uh, how to tech those out. What we're looking at today is in-depth into the valve of, of, of various CCM markers and, and different types of valves that you're going to see um, inside those markers. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, what valve body per se that we're talking about when teching out a valve. It really is just a matter of replacing either two O-rings on the SS25 or Series 6 prototype or replacing one O-ring. They're static and they don't go bad very often. The reality is that they have to sit into a marker for a pretty long time and get sort of crushed. Then when you take them out, they don't seal very well, but I've seen pretty crushed O-rings seal just fine too. So, you know, get one of those O-rings in your kit, one or two, replace them, you know, as needed. Um, but rarely are you going to see one leak just sitting there or in use. It's usually when you put it back together that it, that it starts to leak. So, don't worry too much about that. What we're going to focus today on is the pin. And what I've got here is a WGP pin. And you can see that there's a, a difference between this pin and what eventually, uh, or what Chipley is currently making, this pin right here. Besides the fact that it's machined to much better tolerances, and this is just a, a, a dowel that's press fitted into a piece of uh, a plastic here. Besides being machined, this is also, these, this one on the right here is also repairable. It takes a few steps. But let me walk you through what you might see in the, in the CCM marker. Um, if you're replacing one of these, you know, you just take this out and you replace it with what you've got. But um, what you might find when taking apart a marker is that this valve body isn't brass. Up until just recently, um, the valve bodies were aluminum and they were a blue color. If you look back at any of my other tech videos, I left the old ones in because well, what works is what works and I don't mess with what doesn't work or what with what works. Um, the, now what they're making is brass, which I think is a little bit smoother. I like the idea. Um, I think it's a little bit quicker in recharge, but you know, brass is a, a self-lubricating material. But for a time, all the way up until um, the Series 5s, the earlier Series 5s, not into the Series 6s, but the SS25 Series 5s, you saw them with the old J-squareds, the J2s, um, they had this Delrin pin that Jason Chipley just loved. And it was a really cool idea when you were using it on a semi-auto. The reason is, and let me grab a spring here, the reason is that when you were shooting the marker, um, the pneumatics recocked it so fast that you never got anything called hammer bounce and hammer bounce is also affectionately known in the pump community as farting because that's exactly what it sounds like when the when the um marker gets is fired when the hammer strikes the valve and i'll grab a hammer here just to show you when the hammer strikes the valve what it should do is open that valve let some air out to shoot the ball and then close using this spring and the pressure behind it very rapidly, okay? This pin was so light that once you took the pneumatics off and you put a pump on it, or it started out in pump form, like in some of the Series 5s, the first Series 5 that I own was a 86 degree slide trigger Series 5, the hammer hits it, opens, and because it's not recocked immediately, uh, because it's a, it's a pump now, not an not a auto cocker, it would open, close after letting the ball out the barrel, and then bounce on that valve. And so it lets a little bit more air out. So it's every time you pull the trigger. So this was renowned to be known as the farting valve. It should be called the Delrin you know, pin, but you still might find one of those in a Chipley marker that you're taking apart today. If you do, call Chipley and they will send you uh, one of these newer pins that is by far superior. They, one of the things they did is they lengthened the pin a bit. And what that did is it affected how early in the travel of the hammer that the hammer was striking the valve, opening it, and thus reducing the chance that it has a chance to rebound on that uh, pin. Hits it earlier, opens it up, closes, and it's in its uh, closer to its recock position. The other thing it did, most primarily, is that it added weight. 
it added weight, it made stainless steel on stainless steel, and uh, it made it such that you, you know, you, you got a lot less bounce, trigger bounce. I, I now don't have, not trigger bounce, but um, hammer bounce. I now don't have hammer bounce at all. Now, this was the first iteration of the modular or, uh, you know, re repairable trigger pin. These came loctited from the factory and came in three parts. This bottom little top hat looking guy, this O-ring here, which is the main seal that's going to go wrong inside your valve if you ever have any trouble, and then this really fancy pin that was machined um, out of stainless steel. So that when, if you ever get one of these, the difficulty is with one of these is that it's not as easy to take apart. It depends on how much Loctite was put on it from the factory. You saw me just take it apart by finger. It's because I got this thing disassembled, you know? It's difficult to get apart at times. So being, Chipley being always wanting to improve, they replaced that with this now. Stainless steel bottom, stainless steel top. This used to be aluminum. And now they've got a set screw in here, and they don't have to use Loctite on the pin to hold it together. They use, just use a set screw to hold, using friction, holding these three pieces together, and they're much easier to take apart, okay? Now, no matter what you have, what I would advise is, when you do take these apart, is to get a vise, a small vise with either soft jaws, or get a scrap of leather. This is a pretty big scrap of leather, but if you chuck this up in a vise, and then insert this pin, or insert this, you're able to grab a hold of something and give it a turn without marring it, okay? Um, and I would highly advise never, never putting this portion, the pin, in a vise by itself. That needs to remain smooth. If you have to put something in a vise and give it a little bit of a you know, bite mark, make it this end. That's not nearly as important to, to remain smooth. In fact, it might even hold that spring on a little bit better. Who knows? But, you know, it's also been chamfered to, to hold that. So put it into a vise, and what I do is I put the pin portion in the vise using a scrap of leather here. This is the one I just used to set this video up. Using a scrap of leather, okay? And then I take this Allen key, which looks to be a 564th, and it's been pretty loosened, so... And then I loosen this up. I say it's been pre-loosened. I loosen this up and take this apart. The screw comes out first, and it has been Loctite with what looks to be a little bit of blue Loctite, just very little. So that little grub screw comes out. Then this pin comes off, and it looks just like, you know, the, what you're seeing above you. Take this O-ring and replace it. If you're going to go this far, replace it anyway. And all you have to do is get the new O-ring then. And then, and this is just a little bit of fight in it. You have to fit in this channel here on the valve pin. This always takes me a little, little while when I'm doing this. I always get like half in and then I got to kind of fight it around. But you'll get it. I need time elapse. There we go. So once you've got it to that point, then simply screw this part back in, tightening it down. I would then go ahead, like I said, chuck that back up in your vise and you know, tighten it back down as tight as you can get it. And then use this set screw to use a friction fit to make sure that, that pin doesn't move, okay? Only do this as necessary, and frankly, I would wait until this thing leaks down the barrel. I wouldn't take this apart and uh, do any maintenance on it until absolutely necessary. But that's how to take apart the modular pin system. That's a few of the pins that you might see inside your marker. And it uh, sets you up with uh, how to tech those out. The O-rings are dirt cheap, you know, have a couple of these in your kit, and you're gonna be good to go for years, you know? It's a really cool system. I really enjoy this this change from Chipley as opposed to the pin system that used to be in uh, the old um, War Games style snipers. All right. Thanks a lot for watching the video. Catch you next one.